Ohio has proven to be one of Division III's top teams in 2002. Thanks to the dominating presence of center Jeff Gibbs, the Cardinals have won 12 straight games and tonight will play for the national title. They'll battle the Blue Jays of Elizabethtown College for the Division III championship coming up next. has come to the Roanoke Valley of Virginia and the 2002 Men's Basketball Championship of Division III live from the Salem Civic Center. Tonight, the Otterbein Cardinals take on the Blue Jays from Elizabethtown College here in Salem. Let's see how these teams got here. It has been a wonderful Division III tournament. Last night, Otterbein coming from behind to beat Carthage to reach the championship game. And it was Elizabethtown defeating Rochester in overtime. Good evening and welcome to Salem. Bill Robb along with Guilford College head coach Butch Estes. It's great to have you with us for the Division III Men's Basketball National Championship. It's been a great tournament. Now we're down to the final two. Boy, what great games last night, Bill. And certainly we're going to be entertained this afternoon as we watch one of the best players in the country. This young man is just an amazing, dominating player in the paint. And can he do it all? He certainly can. Meanwhile, this Elizabethtown team comes in here with a record of 29-2, and two, a very high-scoring team, and one that is very well balanced. Well, they're the epitome of the team concept, of course. They depend on each other, spread the basketball around. They are truly, the sum is truly greater than the parts. Well, one of the key parts is John English, and this young man tonight will have the responsibility of guarding Gibbs. It is Otterbein against Elizabethtown for the national championship coming up next. Salem is now the starting lineup here from Salem. First for 29 and 3 Otterbein. This team has a terrific player inside, and number 52, Jeff Gibbs, is the guy to watch. A senior from Columbus, Ohio. Meanwhile, Elizabethtown has also picked up 29 wins this season. Their star player is number 42, Bob Parambo, leading the team at nearly 17 points per game. Two terrific coaches here in this one for Elizabethtown. Bob Flosser in his 12th year, the 2002 Commonwealth Conference Coach of the Year. His team has won a school record 29 games this season, playing in the championship game for the first time. And on the other side, it's Dick Reynolds, the 1965 Otterbein graduate in his 30th season as the head coach at his alma mater. It's the national championship game, Otterbein against Elizabethtown here in Salem, Virginia. There are the officials, Mike Spaniel, John Yorkovich, and Carl Britt, all from Minnesota, and it has been a wonderful couple of days for these teams here in Salem, and a great ride for these teams, and we will crown a national champion in Division Three tonight here in the heart of Virginia. And this is the freshman point guard, Tony Borghese from Columbus, matched up right away by the senior, Rocky Paris, for Elizabethtown. Well, it'll be interesting as we get started here who can oppose their will. These are two very evenly matched teams, but, but both, and both enjoy a lot of offense. They certainly do, Coach. Elizabethtown averages 91 points a game, and Otterbein averages 84. One this of the keys early here will be the pressure that Elizabethtown will put on uh, Otterbein, and you're looking at a freshman there in Borghese, and can he handle it? That'll be one of the keys to the game for him. Borghese is a freshman, very fine ball handler, and a kid that was all state last year, first team quarterback and point guard for his high school. Two possessions and two turnovers, though, for the Cardinals to start the game. Both teams like to get a run, as I mentioned. And of course, for Otterbein, Coach Reynolds was telling me this morning he felt like his team had to stay out of foul trouble. And last night's semifinal games, Elizabethtown had 13 more free throws than Rochester did in their victory. Quick inbound and the first two points of the game by Susie. You don't want to give up easy points on the baseline out of bounds play in any game, particularly a national championship game. 
So Elizabeth Town grabs the early lead. That's three turnovers and three possessions. Some nerves, perhaps, early for this Otterbein team. You took the words right out of my mouth. I'm sure they're a little bit jittery. This is a big stage for these young men. English misfires. And the rebound to Hadley, a key freshman. It doesn't take Elizabeth Town long to put up shots, does it? Here's the freshman, Borges, ties the game. That's how you win at this level with a freshman, a guy who's got a lot of confidence to come here and play and make the plays. It's just the start of things in the Division III National Championship game, and now a steal. Hadley keeps his dribble, and Gibbs gets his first two and a chance for a three-point play. The big guys doing all the ball handling in the middle part of the floor after the turnover, which results in easy basket and perhaps a three-point play. Gibbs is the key man on this Otterbein team. He averages over, well, there you see, 23 points a game, and he's the school's all-time leading rebounder. Three-point play, and Otterbein leads by three. Man-to-man -man here early by Otterbein. And a rebound for Gibbs. Look at the athletic ability of their center. Hadley couldn't get the roll, but Gibbs keeps it alive and scores again. Boy, that is his game, isn't it? The 2002 OAC Player of the Year. Leading rebounder the last two years in Division III, and he is the score early. Well, let's, let's, de let's define what his game is. It's really not what you're seeing right here, but just in a moment, you're going to see a follow shot and, of course, a second chance for a three-point play in order. Two offensive rebounds resulting in six points. He's got six points, a block, and two rebounds, and we have yet to play two minutes. That's a pretty good start for Gibbs. It's all been in transition, too, not against half-court set defense. Good pass. And the finish. Chemistry is amazing among these Blue Jays. They have played together. They know where each other are going. They know how to find each other. They know where to look. Ryan Loftus, the junior from Doylestown, PA, took the pass from Carice. And as we watch the Blue Jays, you'll see the terrific passing team. Gibbs tracks that rebound down in the front court. Shea can't get the roll, and English has the defensive rebound, and here comes the senior, Therese. What a pass, but English couldn't handle it. It goes up the bound to turn it. This team does more spot passing, throwing where a guy is and knowing that he is coming there, which again is a result of playing together. They share the basketball tremendously. And I'll tell you, Elizabeth Town's going to have to do a little bit better job here early in blocking out too many offensive rebounds for Audubon, which is their strength. He gets a look, but not the roll. Gibbs kept it alive for a moment, and Shea will try to pass it to the post. He turns it over. Heller with the steal. Turnover stat man's and the offensive rebound stat man's going to be busy tonight. There is the junior English. An amazing player, 6'3", 225, highly skilled. Leading rebounder on that team. The Blue Jays have won 10 straight games after last night's overtime win over Rochester. Gibbs down low, gets his own miss and finishes. Even when he does miss a shot, which is rare, he often follows his own miss with a stick back. Coach Slosher, that was his exact point in those shoot walk around this morning was they weren't worried about the first shot, but they were worried about the second one, and he's proven that fear to be true. Otterbein off to the early lead. We expect a high-scoring game tonight. Borghese lost the handle of it, and here comes Rocky Paris the other way for the Blue Jays. Turnovers are killing Otterbein right now. All the way to the goal, and the lefty finishes. Good drive that time by Rocky Paris. You've got to get back and stop transition. That's the first key for Otterbein tonight. This is Jeff Shea finding Hadley driving the baseline. And English with a defensive rebound following the miss. Both teams look a little bit winded, but which might be a result of nerves, but also the games last night, late last night. Here is Kevin Shea, the transfer from Capital, all the way to the goal. Beautiful pitch. Two more for Robert Bach. Beautiful penetration off the dribble, finding the open man, but you can't rest. 
Sensational play. English finishes, but Loftus made the sensational touch pass. We're off to a quick start. It's 12-10 Otterbein. A lot of scoring early. At the top, we talked about two of the leading scoring, scoring teams in the country. Another offensive rebound. And Hadley finishes with the left hand to put the Cardinals up by four. It's really fun to watch Elizabethtown inbound the ball after made basket. It's inbounded within seconds. Heller misfires. Offensive rebound. Two more for Bob Carambo. It may come down to which team could sustain, you know, without getting tired. Of course, that means whose bench will play the best today. We'll watch that as it goes along. Down low, Gibbs couldn't finish, but again, followed his own miss and had it swatted out of there. And Paris counterattacks now for the Blue Jays. Right now, Gibbs is not catching in on the first shot, but he is on the second. Heller kept it alive and banked it in, and the scoring continues. The game is now tied at 14. I think there's 10 guys out there looking for a t TV timeout right now, Bill. Take all their energy and emotion they brought to this game, plus the fact they played last night. Wow. Shea lost it out of bounds. It was deflected, I believe, by Loftus, but it will send us to our first timeout. Well, if this is your first time watching Division Three, you're in for quite a treat. Two high-scoring teams. John English leading the way so far for E-Town, and the game is tied at 14. Just where are these teams from? Well, Otterbein is from Westerville, Ohio, near Columbus, a school with an enrollment of just about 3,000 students. All 15 players on the Otterbein team are from Ohio, including that young man, John English. And as we look at Elizabethtown, getting it done early on the inside. Well, they are. They're not actually pounding the ball in or getting those points in transition. And on the other end, Otterbein is getting their points on second shots. Otterbein's Mo Ross, who was a hero last night with that key three-pointer in the final 90 seconds. And Otterbein victory over Carthage will inbound the basketball. Both of these teams are very well coached. Played mostly man-to-man -man defense. And they're fundamentally sound. Gibbs takes the pass, misses, but follows again. That has been the story thus far. I think that's four times that he's missed the original shot. But as I mentioned earlier, Coach talked about it in the shooter round. Got him limited the second shot, and they're not doing that. He's going to get it. Ty Marquette missed the shot. John English down low with the left hand. Scores over Gibbs. That has been the score early as English and Gibbs go back and forth. Well, the two stars are delivering as advertised. Gibbs having a big game and English having a big game. Both in the paint. Both. Are you ready for this now? 6-3 centers. Both have eight points early. Here is the freshman, Tony Borges, point guard from Columbus DeSales High School. A lot of these turnovers, in my opinion, have been unforced turnovers. It's not because of the pressure. Shea misses the three. And here comes Marquette, the senior, down the floor. Feeds Loftus. English and Gibbs swatted out of bounds. Gibbs does it all, folks. 76 blocks now in the season for the senior from East High School. Just outstanding of jumping ability as well as timing. Now we're seeing our first group of substitutions. Elizabethtown, Coach Bob Schlosser going to his bench early. I think they lose a little bit offensively, but they seem to increase their defensive intensity with this group. Decker couldn't get it to go, and... Otterbein has the basketball. Tie ball game just over seven minutes in. Shea hits the runner. Well, if you're an Otterbein fan, it's good to see Shea get out of the blocks early because he's one of the keys to them offensively. Heller finds Carambo. And Gibbs has yet another rebound. And a long ball gets deflected out of bounds by Carambo. The officials will get together on this now. Mike Spanier and John Yorkovich gets the call right. Carambo got his hand on that Good group of officials. Very interesting. We were staying at the hotel with the guys last night. Talked to them a little bit about the process. Four different groups of officials from four different regions come to the Final Four, and then they make the assignments of which game they'll have. And these group, this group is from the West. Kyle Walton dealing with the tough defender, Jim Barron, and the ball gets knocked away. You can see both teams off to pretty good starts offensively. Both shooting about even, doesn't have a high score. 
The foul there is on Gibbs. They say he pushed to get off. That is the first foul on the Otterbein Cardinal center. Well, he's got to stay out of foul trouble because I can assure you, I haven't seen Otterbein play a lot this year, but without him, they're a different basketball team. They have a lot of good players, but none better than Jeff Gibbs. And he transferred in. Started as a Division II football player at Fort Valley State, and after four days, transferred back home to Columbus and Otterbein. Warren in the lane, that's a bonus if he can score. Uh, he's just a terrific defensive player. You and I sat here last night and marveled at his intensity defensively. Oh, Ross putting it on the floor. He had it blocked. Here is Barron from Tamaqua, PA. Hometown, Bob Slosser. The ball gets kicked out of bounds. He wears that white headband, as Jim Barron. That's one of his traditions. He'll take a seat on the bench. Heck of a game early. Tied at 18. We'll be back in Salem in a moment. The Elizabethtown Blue Jays come to Salem, Virginia from Elizabethtown, PA. On College Town near Hershey, Pennsylvania in historic Lancaster County, PA. Enrollment just over 1,700 students. A lot of them are here today in Salem. And so far, we're seeing their favorite guy, John English, getting it done. He leads E-Town. Gibbs leads Otterbein with eight each and the game is tied at 18. Gibbs off to a terrific start eight points and five rebounds for Gibbs. This kid averages 16 rebounds a game. He's had 29 double doubles coming into the season. We had uh, one of the ranked rebounders on our team and we just kept looking at stats every week and saying how in the world could a kid 6-3 get 16 rebounds. Now that I've seen Gibbs I understand. He's phenomenal. He had 24 rebounds early in his tournament in the game against DePaul. Got it to go. E-Town takes a two-point lead. Rambo is a senior from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Gibbs couldn't get the slam to go. He thought he was fouled by Decker. The play goes on. And at the other end, Grace goes it into the left hand. A sensational finish by the senior. Boy, don't underestimate these guys from Elizabethtown. They're just fantastic. They play so hard. They're tough kids. They've got great basketball skills and savvy. Now E-Town on a 6-0 run has its biggest lead. Gibbs answers. Getting the roll off the glass. He's in double figures now with 10. Both of these teams are excellent at their offensive execution and getting the ball down low. Now into a little bit of a zone. I think this is more out of respect for East Town's defense. Apocalypse. Decker was fouled as he went to shoot. Susie got the call. I don't know if there was a foul though. It could have possibly been, but uh, meanwhile, here comes the little engine that pulls a train for E-Town. Paris is just fantastic. He's got great leadership ability. Meanwhile, down at the other end, we're going to go to the free throw line. Team fouls are really low after just 10 minutes. Only three against Audubon and only two against Elizabethtown. So neither team uh, fouling much, and that's a good sign. Good clean play. For Nick Reynolds, he knows that each town will send a couple of bodies at his big guy Gibbs tonight, including Decker, who comes off the bench at 6-4. Argumentably, their best defensive player. Doesn't score a lot of points for him, but can, uh, can be you up. Decker will take a seat, and back into the game comes English. This guy will bang around with Gibbs. So Decker gave him some good minutes in there. Gives English a breather and converts on his free throws. It's truly really two against one. Gibbs doesn't have, they don't really have a sub of Gibbs magnitude, but you're right, Decker and uh, English can both bang on it. It's a game of the paint right now, not a game of the three-point line. You see, uh, I'm doing a lot of interior movement, a lot of screens down low to bring uh, Jeff to the ball. Baldwin gets called for that foul. That is his second foul. A lot of people will just post up a big player, but Coach Reynolds likes to bring Gibbs to the ball off straight. Shea hits the jumper on the quick inbound play, and the senior makes it a two-point. Ball gets deflected out of bounds. That ball may have been deflected out of bounds, but it changed ends in about two seconds. The outlet was to half court, the second pass was to the basket, and they throw to where there's not even a player. They just expect the guy to get there. Now, you have to play a lot of ball together to do that. 
And this E-Town team is a very experienced team. They know exactly where they are on the floor. It's really fun to watch this kid, number 12, Rocky Faris, pass the basketball. Again, the zone defense, the force, that type thing right there. And if they can do that, that's Loftus with the three. Coach Rose was perplexed this morning. Do you cut off the inside game, give up the three, or go the other way? He chose to give up the three, and Loftus proved that was wrong strategy. Hey, they average 91 points a game. They know how to score against just about every type of defense. And now Gibbs is fouled by Heller, and he'll go to the line for two shots. There's some beautiful, beautiful movement by Otterbein inside to, to get Gibbs the basketball. And everybody on that team is programmed to look for him. And they do a wonderful job, both of getting him open and getting him the ball. There you see, comes off a little screen up high. Boy, does he know what to do with it when he gets it. And then beyond that, he's just got a tremendous touch. I guess you'd expect that guy, that from a football player who's a, a, a receiver and who has the ability to catch the ball with good hands. That's Gibbs' first half numbers. This kid is a two-sport star. He plays football at Otterbein as well and is the school's all-time leader in touchdowns. 29 catches, an all-time receiving yardage leader at Otterbein College in Westerville, Ohio. E Town by three, and English gets whistled for a walk along the baseline. That is the fourth turnover in the game by the Blue Jays. Two interesting philosophies defensively. Audubon's playing behind English, and Elizabethtown is fronting Gibbs. Well, as you talked with Coach Kloss earlier today, he told you they're going to always front the postman. Always. Gibbs they're not going to change. Challenge. You know, you get to this level of the season, you can't change what got you here. Here's the freshman, Borges. Still without three in the game, and there's a foul on the rebound. English gets called for the undercut. I'll tell you what, I could not believe how airborne uh, Kyle Walton was. I think he's going to be okay, but there's a three, and we may catch just a clip of him on the other side as he goes totally airborne, comes down and really hits probably more on his hip than anything else. But I tell you about these D3 kids. Now, they play basketball because they love it. It takes more than D3 to put them out. Jay makes it a one-point game. He is off to a quick start today as well. One point, E-Town lead. English misses the jump hook. And here come the cards the other way. Shape, excuse me, uh, English might have been just a step out of his range that time. One for three. Yes, sir. That's a result of the penetration by Shea, drawing the defense and then the dish. That's how he sort of won the game last night. Same type of play, different people. The Shea doing the penetrating. Two for Loftus. Don't expect either one of these teams to go away. <laughs> they don't, you don't win 29 games in one year and go away on one team's run. Well, both teams have won 29 games and the score is tied at 29 and Gibbs with a good look, but Shea could not finish. There's another part of his game that's underrated, his ability to pass the ball. Absolutely. Keller responds with a free ball from the right wing. They, they are relentless, both offen offensively and defensively, getting up and down the floor. If you're not back, we're ready to guard them, and look here. Stay back door, layup with the right hand, beautiful passing by Otterbein. Replay, opposite side of the floor, different person, same play. Another way. And English was fouled. Another nice pass for Heller, saving the ball in bounds, all, and he'll all, get the shots. All the points in the paint are coming on transition. Not, not if it gets a set offense, but more just getting out and running the floor. Which Schloss has already discarded his coat, saving that rock cleaning bill. This is Otterbein's 13th appearance in the tournament, first time in the championship game for E-Town. This is their fourth trip to the playoffs, but their first trip to the finals overall. Look at Gibbs and English going at it down there. Bell <laughs> commercial, where's the beef? Right there. I wonder if English ever played football. I think he did. Did you tell me English played football? I'm not sure if he did or not. So Gibbs still does. Uh, Gibbs has got a chance, he told me, to have a one-on-one -on -one combine with some folks from some NFL teams coming up. Just Why not? He's a guy that caught a lot of passes for Otterbein's football team. He proved the speed just a little bit. I believe he's got all the other tools. Yeah, he says he's got a 4.7. He'd like to get in that 4.5 range in his 40-yard dash. Well, so far, Elizabethtown has the upper hand in this one, leading by three. 
34 to 31. Kevin Shea, the senior from Stowe, Ohio, going back door. We are back at the Salem Civic Center. A high-scoring game so far and a close one. Elizabethtown leading Otterbein. 34 to 31. We are back at the Salem Civic Center. This is the home of the Division III Men's Basketball Championship for the NCAA. And we are joined here courtside by Harry Harvey Cutter of the Civic Center and the tournament director. And boy, Salem, once again, a great host for this championship. We're just, we loved hosting these events. This event, uh, the Stag Bowl, the football championship, the softball in the summer. We just love serving as a host. And the community here really supports and buys into Salem as the championship city, doesn't they it? Yeah, we're Virginia's championship city. It's just a great event. We love hosting. Harry, congratulations to your great staff. You've done a wonderful job again. Thank you, Bill. Great game. And a turnover. E-Town down the floor. Two points for Loftus, the junior from Doylestown. Well, Coach Reynolds, certainly his conversation will be centered around taking care of the basketball at halftime. And so many of these turnovers are really not the result of E-Town's pressure. They're unforced turnovers. E-Town is on a 9-2 run, leads by 5. And Heller with a defensive rebound. That was a good block out by Elizabeth Town. And I think they're winning the battle of the boards in that it's about even. Because one of the statistics that jump out at you is how out of bounds rebounds. Arambo knocks down the three-point shot. The Blue Jays team is starting to grow with its confidence now. Well, they're a balanced team, and uh, they, uh, he's sort of the money guy. Shea will try to answer, and his three-point shot off the mark. And now Heller counterattacks for the Blue Jays. Arambo to Decker. He gets double teamed, finds the open man. That's Heller to the middle, and it's blocked, but a foul is called on... Otterbein, Mark gets whistled for the foul. You see the double team here. They move the basketball. And then my man just takes the ball straight to the basket, sees daylight, and Heller doesn't need much. Heller's from New Holland, Pennsylvania. This is the biggest lead of the day for E-Town. It's come really as a result, I think, of a little bit better defensive pressure at the other end, limiting Otterbein for the first time today to one shot. And, of course, continuing to get out on their break. But they can really spurt on you. When you run like the Blue Jays run, you can spurt. Second free throw is good. Flosser goes to his bench. Marquette returns. Justin Edwards, who goes by Stewie, one of their seniors, comes in as well, giving Heller a breather. Looks like E-Town's going to their bench a little bit more than Audubon is, and it'll be interesting to see how that works uh, as this game progresses. Another turnover. Borghese, the freshman, turns it over, and here is Barron. Down to Decker. Edwards on the baseline. Threw it away. Shea with the steal for Otterbein. Great rotation by the Cardinals. Just a bad pass. Another turnover. And a foul for Decker. A chance for a three-point play. Once again, you see the versatility of the D3 player, the guy who plays inside but can pick off a pass and put it on the floor. Now, you're going to see this result of sort of a bad pass. And Decker's in the right place. And now you got to marvel at how he gets the ball to the hoop in between two players, gets the bucket, gets the free throw. That's 12 straight points for E-Town, and that has Dick Reynolds' concern, his team down by a dozen. You know, he doesn't have as many timeouts today as he normally does, and, you know, I'm sure he's sitting over there contemplating using one of those timeouts right now to stop this run. But I don't believe this game, this game is far from over. Well, both of these teams are so explosive and can score so quickly, the final point margin is not a lot. And both have done it and have the confidence to do it. Three-pointer for Mo Ross. Need I say more? This Otterbein team was picked sixth in its conference in the preseason. I think people underestimated Gibbs. Another turnover inside. They're doubling down on Decker. He's not getting the ball out quick enough. 
But it's still so unusual. Team picks sixth in its conference to make the championship. Ross goes two for two. A quick six points for the young man from Sunbury, Ohio. Well, as I mentioned, far from over. These two teams are just too resilient. A three for Perrin. And Loftus misses the follow, but gets another crack and gets the roll. Two offensive rebounds, three cracks at it. You're going to probably be successful in those circumstances and numbers. Two fun teams to watch play. Oh, God, these kids play so hard. They're so well coached. Shady likes it go. And the defensive rebound this time to Edwards. I don't think we're going to see a shot clock violation in this game. No, no certainly deep. not. Logging foul there on the freshman Borghese. Didn't like the call. He thought he was set. How tough is it to win? You've coached an awful lot of years. How tough is it to win a game like this, a national championship with a true freshman point guard? Unbelievable. We had a, a very, very good freshman at Guilford this year, and we won a lot of games, but we were really concerned going in. I don't know how you get to a national championship, except you got a young man that's a great leader, very, very confident, and obviously a good basketball player. Well, Mo Ross gave him a big boost off the bench. Aaron hits the free throw. This is a team that's used to winning. Otterbein has won 12 straight games. Elizabethtown has won 10 straight. Anybody in this tournament that advances this far is going to have a winning streak. Like that. Maurice comes back in now. Gets to take the place of Barron who sits down. That kid is a heck of a defensive player for E-Town. Well, he's got the ability, but he's also got the heart. The Blue Jays call a timeout, a 30-second timeout with just under five minutes to play in this first half. The Blue Jays with a 10-point lead in their first trip to the national championship game. But I think it's been a result of, uh, well, I'll let you speak about how they got here. Well, you can see how Otterbein can put up points in that first game with Bethany. 121 points and then in the second game against Randolph Macon Gibbs was in foul trouble yet they found a way to win Borghese had 25 in that game and I know how good Randolph Macon is so at that point I know how good Otter Borghese had 25 in that game and I know how good Randolph Macon is so at that point I know how good Otterbein was on the sectional final than Carthage here last night meanwhile E-Town as you see also a very high scoring club and they needed overtime their game yesterday to advance to the championship. They get Gibbs the ball on the block and he finishes. If he can get the ball down there, he can bring the cards back. 16 first half points now for Gibbs. A quick shooting left, this misses. And they'll tie it up. Right. Down at the other end, Elizabethtown didn't have the weak side help rotation they needed to stop Gibbs from scoring. Both these teams are very inside-oriented teams. They prefer to get the ball in there first. They're going to look for their fast break. If they don't have that, they're going to try to set up and get the ball down into the blocks. And, of course, with English and uh, Decker on one team and Gibbs on the other, that's smart strategy. Reese's inbound got deflected, but Etown maintains possession. I wonder how little Reese got the name Rocket. Did you ever hear that? He's steady as a rock, I can tell you that, as a point guard. The shot clock is down to 20. Haven't been able to see that much today. Reese, the lefty, left his three balls short. And Kevin Shea, who, according to Coach Reynolds, is like a coach on the floor, has the basketball. Shea going to the glass. This is the runner, but Gibbs has another rebound. Stick back, and we've got a whistle and a walk on Gibbs before the shot. Well, you've got to give him great credit for the effort, but he lost his balance when he came down, and indeed, he did pick up the pivot foot. That's 11 turnovers in his first half for Otterbein. I'm out. E-Town leads by eight. Basketball National Championship game. Elizabeth Town has a 47-39 lead over Otterbein late in this first half. And although this is a club that averages 91 points per game, these Elizabeth Town Blue Jays, head coach Bob Slosser says, don't call us a traditional run-and-gun team. And that's the thing that sort of bothered us when we came down here. Everybody wanted to talk about how offensive we were 
but uh, no one seemed to give us credit for our defense. But I think we generate a lot of our offense from our defense. Our pressing and just our man pressure, I think, causes a lot of turnovers, causes us the opportunity to get transition baskets. And Butch, they've forced 11 turnovers in this first half, and as a result, they've got the lead. Well, they, their defense has been fantastic. And here, late in the first half, they've limited the shot opportunities to only one thought about. Senior point guard Rocky Therese brings it up on Shea in the final four minutes of the first half. The national championship game of Division Three here at the Salem Civic Center. Whistle down low and a holding foul called on Otterbach. This will be free throws now for E-Town. This has been a very good rebounding team, E-Town, over the course of the season. But last night, they were out-rebounded by Rochester, 50-23, to 23, yet still won the basketball game. Today, facing a guy like Gibbs, they're even on the board so far. Well, because of the emphasis, I'm sure they got in their pregame preparation. That Coach Schlosser, that's all he talked about. They said, we have to rebound with these guys. Because Otterbein is one of the best, if not the best, rebounding team in the country. So a lot of times we're going to do, as players, what our coaches emphasize. Heller makes a pair, and the lead is back to 10. And now the, the Blue Jays get to do their full court pressure, which they enjoy doing. Shane Waltmar, the guard. That ball gets off the fingertips. Susie and out of bounds. That's another an autobine turnover. An example of what I'm talking about. There's really not a lot of pressure there. That's just an unforced turnover. It's something that's definitely going to have to be corrected. I think that's really the key here in the first half. The difference in the game. Eller with the left hand. Misfires and Hadley clears for Harold. That was the 12th turnover. Last possession for Otterbein. Walton to Shane. He gets another runner. Shane has played well in this first half. He truly back to an eight-point game. Well, other than Gibbs, and they're starting to slow Gibbs down a little bit, so... Uh, Shea is a very, very important component. You see the zone here. Again, trying to stay out of foul trouble, trying to slow Elizabeth Town down just a little bit. Here is Therese, who was sixth in the nation in assists this year. Driving in Bishop, finds Heather, and misses the three. A wide open look off a great penetration by Therese. Gibbs trying to play point guard, finally gives it up to Walton. Shea gets it down to Gibbs, and he couldn't finish. And he's fouled on the follow. The young man has got a double-double already, folks. He has 16 points and 11 rebounds in this first half. And you know, you talk about what a great athlete he is. He plays on the football team as a tight end, but he also returns kicks. You know, he had an 85-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. That's well, pretty now, good you for your center. To, would you want to tackle him? If I saw him running to me, I'd get out of the way, too. He did that against Heidelberg. Uh, he's tremendous. Even this level, it's very difficult to play two sports. It's very difficult. He deserves a lot of credit, and he loves basketball. I guess perhaps his greatest talent's at football, but I think his love's out here on the hardwood court. Ross comes back in for Susie, and Ed Reynolds also brings the starting point guard for Geese in. They call that a travel on Hadley, who was falling down. Otterbein faithful behind us. Disapproved, but the Blue Jays have the ball following yet another turnover. Both teams doing playing man to man and will switch quite a bit. Puts the omen on the offense to read. Here's the guy. Young Tony Borghese, and he draws the foul on Decker, and this will be free throws for the freshman point guard for the Cardinals who traditionally is an excellent free throw shooter. That he is at 87%. He'll go to the line for a one and one Back in November in a game in Texas against Concordia, Tony had 12 turnovers in his first couple of games as a Division three point guard. That's he wanted to come out of the game. He said, Coach, I got 12 turnovers. And Dick said, no, stay in the game. And he told the other guys on the team, he said, you let Tony Borghese bring the ball up the floor. That was back in November. Reynolds would not pull him out of the game. He said, you need to learn. And he certainly has. He had to have a great year, and he had 110 assists on the year. Players have to have the confidence of their coach. 
Here's senior Rocky Paris bringing it up the floor for the white clad Blue Jays from Elizabethtown. And a turnover. They were looking for the back door option off the flex. That's what they wanted, but it just wasn't there, and they forced it. For Geese on the baseline, misses badly. Ball kept alive, and Hadley turned and knocked down the Blue Jays' Loftus, who gets credit for drawing the offensive foul. Well, that's interesting. We got a little sc scramble going on for the basketball here. Loses balance, and there you see the foul. He did. He turned his body into him and just ran him over. Very, very physical. He's down by six with the ball. Loftus brings it up on Shea. Decker tried to force one inside with a point guard on the baseline and turns it over. That's back-to-back -back turnovers. Well, you're seeing some breakdowns in the fundamentals of these guys. Ross off the glass. How about that for Mo Ross? His third big three-point shot of this half. If this was a horse game, he'd just won. It would be a hard shot to duplicate. For a minute to go in the first half. Paris. Home of three. The lefty makes it a five-point E-Town lead. Well, that was a huge basket. Little run there by Otterbein, and that kind of silences the Cardinal. They get a six-point game, 52-46. Grace had it stripped with under right at about a half a minute to play in this half. Well, you're going to see the ball movement here. There's your skip across the court, and a guy who can do that normally just you. That was kind of amazing. I don't think he intended to bite that basketball, but he'll certainly take the three. I'm with you. Ross is at three. He follows the miss, and will go back to the free throw line for two more. Boy, the effort is just relentless by Gibbs. I mean, he has to be blocked out and then blocked out. He's led Division Three in rebounding in each of the last couple of years. With his first half performance here today, he's recorded his 30th double-double of the season of the season out of his career this year 30 on the season i mean he has all the physical tools but then you throw in the tenacity and the intensity with which he plays he is the he is the whole package and i think it's been many many nights this year and i'm sure anybody from Audubon would tell you they wouldn't be where they are if it weren't for jeff gibbs and they will sorely miss this young man next year as a senior Adley will take a seat. Gibbs will step back to the free throw line. Four-point game for E-Town. You know, another amazing thing, both of these teams recruit pretty much in their states. Elizabeth Town, most of their players from Pennsylvania, and Audubon, most of theirs from Ohio. Every player from Ohio, in fact, 11 of them are in that central area near Columbus. Decker with a stick back with 13 seconds to play. And now last shot time for Otterbach. Down by six. Or Geese lets it go. And Walton could not convert. And the horn sounds. I think there could have been a foul right there, particularly on the follow. Dick Reynolds thought that Walton was fouled. Well, what a great first half for Jeff Gibbs. 18 points and 12 rebounds, but at halftime, it's Elizabethtown leading by six. 54 to 48 in favor of the Blue Jays. The NCAA Men's Division III National Championship game and the Elizabethtown College Blue Jays with a six-point lead over the Otterbein College Cardinals. Bill Roth with Butch Estes here courtside in Salem and these are two very high scoring teams and you haven't seen very many NCAA tournament games probably this week with this many points in the first half but it's not a surprise if you've watched these teams play this year not at all a very very physical first half of course Elizabethtown getting the uh, the edge I think on their ability to push the basketball in the fast break but countered by an unbelievable first half by Jeff Gibbs are you kidding me 
He has a double-double in the first half. I'm still recruiting guys like to have a double-double in two games, much less just a half. Yeah, it's his 30th double-double of the season. He has 18 points and 12 rebounds here at halftime. And what's interesting is this is the third game in a row in this tournament now that Otterbein has trailed at halftime. Can they come from behind again? Absolutely, but they're going to have to take care of the basketball. That's been their bugaboo here in the first half. Just too many careless passes, which results in allowing Elizabeth Town to get out of the back break, and that's when they're at their best. And I think this team, the Blue Jays, came in here to play their game, and so far in the first 20 minutes, they've done exactly that. Both teams like to push the ball, but both teams get it done on defense, and they score by creating turnovers, and that's been the key. Well, just a lot of intensity, well-executed, well-played first half with a lot of heart, and I think that's the thing about Division Three basketball. There's some, there's probably six or seven of these guys out here that could be playing Division One and could be in the big tournament, but they didn't get that opportunity. They're making the most of what they have, and the one thing that this division, uh, I think, exposes is your heart. And if you don't have a heart, you'll get exposed real quick. And I'll tell you what, there's 15 guys on each of these teams who have really big hearts. All right, I'll look back at the first half, and we'll have a chance to take a look at some guys really getting it done inside because that has been really the key for the first half. It hasn't been a whole lot going on on the perimeter, but when the ball goes inside to English, he usually converts. Well, he's not very big, but he's very efficient. He's got great moves. And then this guy, what more can you say? That's power plus ability. Coming right back, going right back inside the English at this end. And guess how Audubon counters at the other end? One for you and one for us. Right back down into the paint. And that guy might be the best when he misses a shot and follows it. That might be his key to get all these offensive rebounds. Follows his own shot. There are the numbers at halftime. Otterbein just under 50% from the field, and E-Town a sizzling 51%, 20 of 39 from the floor. Of course, the stat that jumps, jumps out at you is Otterbein's 13 turnovers to E-Town's eight, and of course, the points off those turnovers. So I'm sure Coach Reynolds, a big part of his conversation was at halftime, guys, take care of the basketball. If we will just execute and take care of the ball and give ourselves an opportunity to get that ball into Gibbs, he'll do good things with it. This weekend, of course, it's basketball. Next weekend, it's the NCAA Women's Frozen Four semifinals. Friday at 5 and 8.30 p.m. Live on CNN Sports Illustrated. The teams will be selected tomorrow night. Host site is at the University of New Hampshire. Last year, Minnesota Duluth captured the titles. It all begins Friday, 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Live on CNN Sports Illustrated, the Women's Frozen Four. Well, here we go, 20 more minutes, and one of these things is going to happen. Against Carthage, and they rally to win behind Gibbs. Shea gets fouled early, and he'll go to the line for two free throws. Well, he likes to shoot off the dribble, penetrating the baseline particularly. He's had a weakness to some extent of leaving his feet too early and sometimes getting in a bind, but he's been very effective today. And he's sort of the outside complement to the inside game of Gibbs. Coach Dick Reynolds, a 65 graduate of Otterbein, the sixth winningest active Division III coach, hoping for his first national title. Here is Shea, who transferred from one of their arch rivals, Capital. And a rare miss at the line for an 88% free throw shooter. He has to rank among the top in Division III. That's, you shoot 87%, you're one of the top in the country. 17 points in their national semifinal win over Carthage. And the pass that gave them the winning basket, actually, and great penetration and pitching. It's a five-point E-Town lead. Here is Rocky Paris, the lefty from Harrisburg. Started by Borghese. They go inside right away, and that ball was blocked by Mock, a former University of Toledo football player. That was a key block early. That was a great athletic move. Came from the weak side to take away an easy two points. And Borghese answered, so Otterbein a quick 3 0 run to start the second half. The left hand English answers in the front court for the Blue Jays. I don't think anything upsets you more as a coach than when your team doesn't get back and get set on defense. And that's just great. They're programmed to do that. Lucas Town just does it every time. Here is Mock backing in. Out to Borghese. Mock's not looking to shoot much. He's more of a transporter. Shea for three. Looks 
like Otterbein has really come out with a little bit more intensity here in the second half. Lock is on the baseline. Yes, and it counts. But they're going to have to carry that intensity to the defensive end of the floor and what we call conversion or the ability to get back. That's two straight transition baskets. Now here you're going to see the pitch ahead. That's what we call pitch ahead. And they're just, the defense is not set. They get a relatively easy shot. Maurice does such a nice job of getting the ball to guys in positions where they can score. Very rarely makes a bad pass. Well, the Blue Jays will run to certain spots. It's a programmed or a structured fast break. Everybody going to certain places, and they know they're going to be there. They trust each other. Loftus rolls in his 14th point. And here you see the 2-1-2 press by the Blue Jays. See how they counter it, just like they were on it in the walkthrough this morning. Excellent execution by Audubon. But you made a good point in the first half. A lot of their turnovers have been of the unforced variety. They haven't come against the press. Well, they slowed down a little bit here in the first few minutes of the second half, so let's see how it goes. It's Steve Shea. Gibbs will often start out in the perimeter and then go screen down and then go into the post. Shot clock at five. Shea for another three. For Geese with the stick back. And he misses from close. Here we go. Harris, nice run out to Marquette. Has the defensive rebound and will go the other way. Bobby's got knocked to the deck over here. Well, I don't think it was intentional. I think everybody was just running down the floor and they ran into each other. But John Yorkovich felt like somebody was trying to gain an advantage, so he consequently called the foul. Not to the liking of Coach Reynolds. Now we see the zone again, just giving. Elizabeth had a little bit different looks to slow him down a little bit because this is a team that likes to shoot quick. Loftus misses another offensive rebound for English. <laughs> Weakness of the zone is sometimes offensive rebounding. That gives the Blue Jays a second chance. Look at the unselfishness in the ball movement. Right for the best, really the best shooter. Arambo misses, and then a frustration foul as he knocked Gibbs down. Early going in this second half, it's the NCAA Division III National Championship game from the Salem Civic Center. Bob Flosser and his Elizabethtown Blue Jays have won a school record 29 games this season. They average 91 points a game, and they're well on their way to that. But Otterbein not going away with maybe the best player at this level in senior center Jeff Gibbs trying to rally for the third game in a row after trailing at halftime in this tournament. Both teams using their bench. I think that's going to be a big key as we go down the stretch. When you have to play back-to-back -back games Friday, Saturday, your bench is important to you, particularly with the style of play these two play. There's no resting up and down the court. And over by Borghese. Here is Marquette. Could not convert. Got an otter will come the other way. you got to finish. They're getting some opportunities, but not finishing, and that's going to allow Otterbein to hang around. Again, Gibbs follows his own miss. They keep it alive, and Ross saves it in bounds. Can Mock come away with it? Yes, and then he gets pushed, and the foul is on Therese. No, he was out of bounds first. Oh, what great effort there by Mock and Gibbs and the, the whole bat. Well, watch this. Just going after the basketball. Now, watch Mock right here. I mean, he just gives up his body, but you can see foot clearly out of bounds. Nice call by Carl Britt. E-Town by five with the ball. Maurice to Marquette. You gotta probe the defense here, and you gotta get the ball inside. You can't live and die by the jump shot. And then Marquette buries a three. And all of a sudden, E Town's lead grows to eight early in the second half. Well, they're a very balanced team. They have the inside punch and the outside punch. Gibbs lost the handle. Borghese is able to save it in bounds over there. Right now, I think Audubon really needs to settle down and execute. Get that ball down the block to their man. Long shot, long rebound, and here goes the Blue Jays. Catching it up the floor. 
And English gets fouled down low, and that is the third now on Jeff Gibbs. Well, that's interesting. He's averaged about three fouls per game. Now, you want to change the complexion of the games, you let Gibbs get in foul trouble, and I would assume the complexion of the game would change. Elizabeth Town led by six at halftime. That lead is up to eight. Thanks to the jumper by Brian Marquette here in Salem. The Elizabeth Town Blue Jays and the Otterbein College Cardinals battling for the NCAA Men's Basketball Division III Championship today here in Salem, Virginia. Neither team shooting well this half, though, Justin. Well, not at all. And I think if you're Otterbein, you got to get that ball every single time down the court, unless you score in transition, you got to get it into Gibbons' hands. And so far, he's only had one touch this half, no points. At 18 and a half, still has got 18. He stays in the game with three fouls, and that is something to watch. They're going to stick with his zone to perhaps save him from picking up a four. Fourth, but you can be sure that the Blue Jays will try to pound it inside. Well, they really will. Reese misses. If we say that as he shoots yeah. a three. Gibbs comes down with his 15th rebound of this game. Well, it's a point where if the list of will execute, they might have a chance to put out a bound away, but that kind of shot is a little bit hurried. There's another one of those turnovers. They have plagued the Cardinals here today. Another three ball, and Loftus converts. Now that's, they shot about two or three of them. They finally got one. And it's critical time right now. If you're a Cardinal from Audubon, you've got to regroup. Dick Reynolds going to take a timeout. His team is down by 11 here in the second half. E-Town hoping that today is their day to bring the championship home to Pennsylvania. Elizabeth Town College Blue Jays have built an 11-point lead here in the early going in this second half, bidding for the national championship of Division III. And for more information, log on to NCAAChampionships.com for all the latest info on the NCAA championships this spring. NCAAChampionships.com is the official website for all NCAA championships. You can learn more about Jeff Gibbs, who has set a new rebounding record. Jeff Gibbs is going to have to get going here if they're going to make a comeback. They're down 11. A lot of time left. Notice Kevin Shea was talking to his teammates, and as you mentioned earlier, he's the leader on this team, but he was trying to rally troops during that timeout from a player perspective. Marquette for three. And Gibbs has yet another rebound. That's the all-time record set back in 1975. Willie Parr of Lemoyne Owen. That was the first year they had the NCAA Men's Division III Championship. And Willie Parr has seen Gibbs make his all-time rebounding record. And he adds to that without offensive count. Big bag is good for Hadley. Big, big basket for Otterbein. And a turnover by the Blue Jays. A little too much. That was a 30-foot pass that only needed to go 20 feet. A little bit too much excitement on that one. Well, they were down by 13 points, was this Otterbein team to Carthage yesterday. On this floor, they rallied to win. Gibbs got hauled down. That'll be a foul on Decker. It's funny how when we get in the bind, we go back to what we know we do well. That's exactly what the Cardinal is doing right now. They're getting that ball every time into Gibbs. Much to this man's chagrin, he's got to figure out a way to try to keep it out of there. Everybody in this tournament is called Gibbs a mini version of Charles Barkley. I don't know if he's a mini version. He may be the real version of Charles Barkley. Great body, great hands, great intensity. Good look for Borghese. Let's it go. Didn't get the roll. But another offensive rebound. Even the guards are rebounding. And that's, that's the thing that Lizardtown can maybe close this deal if they can seal off the boards and not give second opportunities to Otterbein. Another foul on the Blue Jays. Otterbein is taking control on the glass here in this second half. Well, they're not desperate yet, but they know they got to get going. And so they're playing with a little bit more passion. Shea will go back to the free throw line. 88% shooter has scored, as you see, 14 today. I was going to ask you in the first half, is this going to be one of those games where the first team to 100 wins? <laughs> because we're on that kind of pace. Well, that's not surprising, but uh, but what is surprising is how they get to that many points. And 
everybody talks about offense, but both coaches, all they wanted to discuss with us was their defensive pressure and their presence in that end of the floor. Two more for Shea. Oftentimes, you'll see in a Final Four setting in the National Championship game, the scores are lower. Teams seem to value possessions more, but here in Salem, we've seen run and gun every minute. Wait, that's really true. A lot of times you'll see teams at this level go into a half-court game and become more cautious. That hasn't been true, but both coaches spoke about we got to be ourselves, we got to be ourselves, we got to do what we've done. And I think for the most part, both teams have done that. Barron gives it up to Decker. Gibbs has not come out of this game. He's played much of this second half with the three personal fouls, and he's guarding Decker. And the foul is called. It's hard to get open away from the basketball because of all the switching that's going on defensively. Both teams do it very well. And they're giving each other their own medicine, so to speak. If you've just joined us, that's Dick Reynolds, the longtime coach of the Otterbein College Cardinals in his 30th year as the head man in his alma mater. Try it again, and there's Bob Slosser in his 12th year. Might add that both of these guys have wonderful assistant coaches who we've enjoyed meeting here, and some of these guys are going to be great head coaches someday if they want to go that route. Here's Marquette with a drive and a nice dish. English could not convert. Guess who gives another rebound? Goes behind the back, finds the open man, and Mock gets it on the baseline. Borghese for three. Just not dropping for the freshman. He's a kid that had 25 earlier against Randolph-Macon. Just can't get it to drop in this one. Right now, Elizabethtown's not getting very good shots. They're continuing to go at their pace, but pretty highly contested. Not having much success, but at the other end of the floor, neither is Otterbein at this moment. Well, neither teams is sh shooting as well as they would like, but you got to love the pace of the game up and down. Well, it's going to take an effect as you go down the stretch. Three more for Shea. And lo and behold, the Cardinal is back. Down 11 just a few moments ago, now four. Here they come, and here come those fans from Westerville, Ohio. Jumping up and down. They've been chanting OC, OC all weekend here. And Decker gets fouled by Mock, and he'll go to the free throw line for two. It's a 7-0 run for those Cardinals, and they are right back in it, down by just four. You talk, based on the number of people I see here from uh, Westerville, there can't be anybody back in town. They must have shut the whole operation down, brought everybody here. But you know, Salem's a nice place to spend the spring. That was the third foul, by the way, on Mock. And to the free throw line goes Decker. Only a 65% free throw shooter. Nice release, though, nice touch. I think another interesting thing about Elizabethtown is most of their freshmen, they have a JV team, and most of their freshmen have to play JV the first year. This is truly a team of upperclassmen who have gone through the system, and that may explain to you why they have such great chemistry. They've all done the same thing and made the same sacrifices. They really believe in each other. Second one is good for Decker, and that'll send us to a break. A high-scoring, exciting game today here in the championship city of Salem, Virginia. Title on the line today here in Division Three. Elizabeth Town has built a six-point lead here in the second half. Rambo and English continue to play well. Meanwhile, here in the stands down from Pennsylvania, Good look at the young Ryan Paris. There's Daddy, Rocky Paris. Ryan was born just three weeks ago. And saw Mom Angie. Young Ryan Paris. It's going to be a heck of a spring for Rocky Paris if Elizabethtown wins his ball game. <laughs> He's got a lot of responsibility on and off the court, doesn't he? He's a new daddy, and he is the point guard for a team that has a six-point lead in the national championship game. Number 12, Rocky Paris. Gibbs turned it over. Coach, that is 17 Otterbein turnovers now. Well, that time, uh, Borghese needed to dribble over and get a little bit better angle to pass the ball in. Oh, 
Otterbein, Otterbein doing what it does well, and that's rebound the basketball and allowing them to stay in the game. But they're going to have to score and cut down on the turnover. Gibbs with a steal. Look at this guy. One-on-one -on -one with Loftus, and he wisely goes to the corner. Nice pass. He gets credit for the assist after the steal. Sensational play, and the lead is down to four now for Etown. Guy Parambo that really hasn't gotten off yet like he normally does. He's made a lot of big baskets for these Blue Jays this year. And what for both of these teams will be a, a year they'll always remember. Here's English, draws contact and gets the roll. How strong is he? And you know what? He's going to be back next year. He's only a junior. He's terrific. He's so deceiving. He, you watch him in warm-ups, and you, you wouldn't even think he could play basketball. But, buddy, you get that ball in his hands, and a combination of his heart, his skill, his desire, you get 14 points and four rebounds in the national championship game. It's a six-point E-Town lead. A lot of basketball left to play, though. Here's Borghese on the baseline. Finds the open man, Shea. Good man-to-man -man defense by Elizabeth Town. Now the shot clock in single digits for only the second time in the game. They get it to Gibbs. With the right hand, he gets the roll. And Gibbs now with 20. Well, he's difficult when he gets the ball. He's hard to stop. A stick back is good for Parambo after the loft is missed. He just has that ability to get you a big basket when you need it. Not very flashy, but I don't think flashy is the right word for this Elizabeth Town bunch. Blue collar might be a better word. You got that right. Borghese hits his first three ball. He's got nine, and it is a three-point game, and the Otterbein kids are up now. Well, you just sense both teams are going to play their best basketball down the stretch here. This kept it alive. Can't convert. And it'll be whose possession? Good call. Carl Britt says give it to Otterbaum. Elizabeth Town really wanted it. That's a good call. Well, they trailed against the Paw and they came back to win. They trailed against Carthage and they came back to win. They were down by a dozen today. It was this group of kids from Otterbein College. They were down by a dozen and now they're down by just three with the ball. And a foul here by Heller. As he knocked Walton over here against Press Row. Heller's got a little bit of, a little bit of weight advantage there against Walton. That was the fourth foul, by the way, on Heller. He'll sit down with 9.04 to play. Well, that's something to watch, because Heller gives him a lot of offensive firepower. 15 foul. A three-pointer here with tie the game. Otterbein down by three with the ball. Here is Shea keeping it alive. Back to Borghese. Shea has nice presence about him. He looked up at that shot clock to see what was up. High game. Shea knocks down the triple. 71 off. Well, he keeps doing that. He can be the mayor of Westerville. Here is Gibbs on the run. Nice pass. Got it back. And he was fouled. You're going to see Shea on the quick release, and that's really a tough shot because he's sort of going away from the basket. And he is the emotional leader, not only of this team, but of, of this whole community, I think, at least this weekend. That was team foul number six, so both teams in the bonus now for the rest of the game. And Gibbs, Gibbs Otterbein, its first lead of this second half. Picking up only his third point of the half. But with that said, they've got the lead. They've come all the way. Now, remember, they were down 11 just a few minutes ago. It's been a game of spurts, Bill. English is on the bench getting a breather. And so Decker takes over inside for the Blue Jays. 
8 10 to play. It's a 9 2 Otterbine run to take the lead. And now a turnover again by Etown. One of the counters to the type of offense that Elizabeth Town is running, the, what's called the flex, is to switch it out. That's exactly what Otterbine did and caused some confusion to the Blue Jays and consequently threw it away. There's a lot of little things going on defensively that are causing both teams a lot of problems. Elizabeth Town now with a dozen turnovers in this game. Some of these turnovers come because you're looking to throw the ball to somebody at a certain spot and he's not there because of a defensive adjustment and then you consequently throw the ball away. You just watch how they switch out here. Orgis's post feed trying to find Gibbs was deflected and the Blue Jays counterattack. Now I'm going to tell you these turnovers are because of good defense. Not, they're not unforced anymore. Reese finds the open man. Three points and a foul away from the ball as well. This could be a huge play. It's a three-point basket by Parambo, but down low, we have a foul away from the ball, so we're going to have a one-and-one one as well. I don't think that the Blue Jays look for Parambo for any particular thing. I think it's a team of very good players in every position, yet, in my opinion, He's the key guy. He always gets the big basket when they have to have it. So the E-Town Blue Jays were down by one point. Parambo hits a three, put him up by a pair. And now I believe it is Decker that'll go to the line. That's a huge, huge play in this game. Well, he's given them a good offensive game today. He's no more for his defensive ability, but today's been very effective on the offensive end. Decker can't hit the front end of the one-and-one, one, so just a three-point play. And now E-Town leads by two. Mo Ross, who hit a couple of huge threes in the first half. Got a key guy off the Cardinals bench. Shea, another three ball. He's got 25, and Otterby up by one. Beautiful play, well executed, bringing him off the double screen. Their best shooter, their senior, their leader. And he delivers. On the floor, another rebound for Gibbs. Goes behind his back. You gotta like the way this kid plays. He's just a winner, isn't he? He can play for me anytime he wants to play. I love his defensive intensity. And a holding foul whistled by Barron. He probably got in the way with a little bit of banging and holding earlier. That time he just got caught because he did it out there in the middle of the floor where everybody can see it. Dick Reynolds has an inside Haas. Gibbs has 21 and 20, but on the perimeter, it has been Shea today who has been the key guy for him with 25 points. Kind of a one-two punch, which is very effective and very difficult to guard. Who's going to take a seat on the bench now for Coach Slosser? And the line goes for Geese. I mean, you're looking at, at 10 assists from Borghese today. That's phenomenal. And he is a freshman. Are you sure? I'm sure. <laughs> from the Sales High School. Rambo hit the three from the corner. But with 6.45 to go, it is Otterbein up by three. with a three-point lead over Elizabethtown. Dick Reynolds has been in coaching for 30 years, and it might be another 30 years till he comes across another guy like Gibbs. He's just probably the most popular kid on campus, and uh, he just brings to us uh, the ability to have an inside game, offensively and defensively. He has the ability to make the other people play better. He does that on this play, doesn't he, Coach? Well, he does. I mean, you're not... We're not used to seeing a guy his size that can have the ability to handle the ball, keep his head up, and then find his teammate wide open for a big two points. So Otterbein is up by three, and E-Town has the basketball out of the timeout with six and a half to play. It's going to come down with all the switching defensively. It's going to come down to that turnover there as a result. Nobody open because of all the switching that's going on away from the ball, which means somebody's going to have to take this game over and drive the basketball. And that's probably what will decide this game for it's all over. Somebody making a big individual play on their own. Shea leading the way with 25 for Audubon. A 
surprised when a senior has a big game and what he knows will be his final collegiate basketball game here today in Salem, the Division Three National Championship game. But you know, not many of these guys are going to go and play pro ball, so it truly is their last game. The freshman Borghese couldn't get it. Look at Gibbs with those fingertips keeping it alive. That is rebound number 21 for him. And now Ross. Right, that's beautiful basketball, and I'm going to go all the way back to Gibbs, who gives, gives his team a second opportunity, an offensive rebound, which really is the story of this game right now. Gibbs goes on the floor. It'll be a hell ball, or did he call a timeout first? Yes, he did. What a heady kid. And they spread over there to that Otterbein bench, and the kids over there from Ohio are going nuts. Well, the switching defense has really got Elizabethtown out of sync. Uh, with their offense right now. You, you're going to see nice ball movement. The ball comes in. Now, let's see if we see here how he keeps his ball alive. See him just keep it alive right there. Then he gets the ball. Now, watch. Still always looking for his teammates. Then it goes in and back out. And that young man right there, as he proved to us last night, can deliver that shot. Mo Ross, and that guy, is he not the man of the hour? Wow. And rebounding right now is just the, the whole storyline in this basketball game. It's been all out of mind, which they have a reputation. That's their calling card as they come into this game. It's one of the best rebounding teams in the country. They've certainly lived up to it here in the national championship game. Ross brings it across the line. Otterbein with a six-point lead. This matches the largest lead of the game for the Cardinals. And a turnover. The Blue Jays come up with a key steal. It was English that knocked it away. Now Paris. Can't get it to go. This is a two-on-one. And Shea with a pull-up. Well, that's a big-time offensive play. It was handled beautifully defensively by Paris. Made him shoot the jump shot. But Keller does not get a friendly roll and another rebound for Gibbs his 22nd of the game I want to know what the NCAA record for reboundings at any level is because we may be going to see the record broken here today he's in the 20s right now folks but still five minutes to play in the game his team is up by eight he has 22 rebounds and we got five minutes to go in his basketball game Heisman Borges got fouled on his way to the goal by Loftus It'll be a one and one. Bear in mind, though, if you're an E-Town fan, you know this. This team, the way they run, the way they can score points in a hurry, they're a long way from being out of this game, even though it's 455 left, and they're down eight. They're very much in this game. Well, Bob's team has been such a good field goal shooting team over the year at 52%, but today they're well under that. It, at 42% range, and they've turned the ball over far too frequently. Well, the defensive... In intensity, the execution by Otterbein here in the second half, much improved over the first half. Their second half shooting percentage by the Blue Jays is way down. He scored 54 points in the first half, but only 20 in the second half. And Otterbein, as a result, has rallied to take the lead, which is now up to nine. Some of that could be fatigue from playing the last game last night and having to go to overtime, but I think it's more a result of great defense here in the second half by the uh, Cardinal. That is a new record, Coach, for the championship game. 22 rebounds for Gibbs. Nine-point game, under five minutes to play. And Gibbs swats that shot out of bounds as Loftus took it to the goal. I'm not sure that Audubon is going to win, but is there any doubt who you're going to vote for for the most valuable player? It'll be that guy right there. Ooh. You may see him playing tight end for some NFL team someday. Remember the name, Judd Gibbs from Columbus, Ohio. 4.28 to play. I'm telling you, Elizabeth County is out of sync offensively right now. And another turnover there. Shooting under 30% and yet another second half turnover. Tell two different halves each direction. But now we're going to see if Audubon has the ability to go down the stretch and close the deal. Or he spins the ball and gets it inside to Gibbs. He spins and posts up back to the freshman. Got it. And I 
telling you right now, Autobahn's feeling it. They just went to another level emotionally. It is a 21-3 Autobahn run. And what do I mean by that? That's just going to give them more energy. And at the other end, you see just the opposite. A little frustration from Paris right there with a purposeful shove. Right now, if you're Elizabeth Town, you've got to find out. You're going to find out who your leaders are. Somebody's got to settle this team down, and it cannot be a coach. It's got to be a player on the floor who will bring this group together. And they are a good group of kids who have really come through a lot. So if anybody can do it, I think they can. That was the ninth foul on each town. This will be a one-and-one one now for Tony Borghese. You look at this kid at 5'10", 155. He was named first-team All-State as a quarterback in Ohio last year. You say, how? Well, we talked with him. He says, well, we ran the option at the sales. I told him he's still running the option here, only now he's only got one option. That's to get it down to Gibbs. But I say that, and you got to give Shea a lot of credit today. What a great game he's had. And Borghese now with 17 points. And with 3.43 to play, the folks in Westerville are getting excited. National championship could be coming their way. It is March Madness here in Salem, Virginia. That's what these teams are playing for, the Division III Men's Basketball National Championship. And the group of students from Otterbein College in Westerville, Ohio, no, they are 340 away from that if they can hang on to a 14-point lead. Otterbein College. But Elizabethtown won't go away. Decker gets the layup. Adding it to a 12-point game. And here's the press. For Geese to Gibbs. Look out. A little bit of a breakdown by Elizabethtown there. Allowed the run out. Rambo followed by Muck on the shot attempt. That'll stop the clock with 3.15 to play. That's his fourth personal foul. You see great execution on their offensive press break. They're able to get out long, and of course, boy, you put that uh, the ball in that guy's hands with nobody in between him and the basket. You can just about count on what's going to happen. He does run the floor very well, Bill. That's Parambo's numbers for the game, an 81% free throw shooter, and he misfires. Well, the fourth miss of the line tonight for Elizabethtown Blue Jays. It's been an incredible season for both of these teams. Elizabethtown has won a school record 29 games. And Otterbein, which was picked sixth in its own conference, the Ohio Athletic Conference, has surprised everyone. Well, it is amazing how you can be picked six in your league and, and, and maybe win the national championship. But I think probably underestimated Gibbs. Having the sectionals in their home court probably helped them a little bit. And the key play of some contributors for Yeast comes in as a freshman and does such a tremendous job, say, with Hadley. And, you know, to be quite honest, Ross didn't play last year. He was just dominating in murals at Otterbein. This comes in this year, all of a sudden averaging double figures. Must have been a pretty good intramural team. Shea has been the leading scorer today for 27, and he'll go to the line for 2.56 to play. Well, the problem now, if you're Elizabethtown, you've got it. You're 13 down with three minutes to go. You're in a hole, and you're going to have to find somebody to foul. And for the most part, these Cardinals are pretty good free throw shooters, and none better than the young man on the line right now. And I think we'll see the ball in his hands a majority of this last two minutes and 57 seconds. That's Shea I'm talking about. Shea makes the first one. Hey, a week from tomorrow, it's the NCAA Women's Frozen Four Championship game. Live on CNN Sports Illustrated, Sunday, March 24th. The Women's Frozen Four Championship. Live on CNN Sports Illustrated, a week from tomorrow, 4 p.m. Under three minutes to play, Otterbein by 14. Good look, Paris gets it down low to the driving for Rambo. If they can catch up, it's going to have to be done here on the defensive end of the floor. There's a start at the turnover. Now remember, they can score in bunches, and they're used to pressing, so this is their normal style of play. The question is, they have enough gas left to do it. Paris trying to draw the foul. 
But Borghese got out of the way of him. Had he played by the freshman, he backed off. He knew exactly what Rocky was trying to do there, lean in and draw a foul. Very smart, and, and they were very fortunate. I say Elizabeth Town not giving up a layup at the other end because Borghese didn't get back on defense because he was trying to score. They had a look. And there's the holding foul. That will be the fourth on Loftus. Now you're going to see... You can see a, a, a group of kids who won't give up. Great execution there by Parambo, who I mentioned earlier, I think is their money man. They're going to have to pull a lot of money out of the bank real quick here. They're going to come back in this game. Borghese makes the free throw, and Dick's freshman point guard all of a sudden has 18 points. He's becoming the hero down the stretch because he's controlling the show, and he's going to get to the free throw. He now has 15 in the second half alone, and Otterbein, 207 away from the championship. They're in pretty good shape. I got it. Maurice hits the runner. It's a 13-point game. Block turning with under two minutes to play. And there's Walt on the run, and Maurice reaches in on him. Walt in there because of his free throw shooting ability. So, of course, nice maneuver by Coach Reynolds and his staff. And for old Rocky Maurice. His fourth personal. Right now, you can't be worried about falling out of the game. You've got to stop the clock, but I believe that's four to five straight free throws right there by Otterbein, and the only way they could possibly lose this game would they have to miss some free throws. Walton well, makes both. They're not only making them, they're swishing them. This level of basketball, great fundamentals. And great lead for these teams. Great effort, too. Not only play that, but we're playing hard. Everybody on this court plays hard. Rambo gets the two, and quickly the timeout called by Bob Schlosser's team. With a minute 40 to play, they're down 13. This will be a full timeout here in Salem. This city has been a wonderful host over the years. The attendance here has been terrific. Once again, here's Parambo's last basket. These kids, I've talked with many of them, they've had a good time here this weekend. Oh, absolutely. It's your dream if you're a basketball player to play for the national championship. And I mean, there are more Division III uh, teams than any other division, so a lot of kids had this dream, but only one's going to walk away with it. For more, log on to NCAAChampionships.com for all the latest information on all levels of NCAA play. NCAAChampionships.com is the official website for the NCAA Championships. It is March Madness here in Salem, Virginia, and the fans from Otterbein College, it's about a six-hour ride from the Columbus area here to the Roanoke Valley area of Virginia. These fans were so excited. It was in the 80s here yesterday. They had a great time visiting the Commonwealth of Virginia, which always hosts the Division III tournament. Minute 40 away from crowning a new national champion, and uh, Otterbein is in a great situation right now. All you got to do is execute down the stretch, and it's it's going to be very very difficult, I think, for Elizabeth Town to make a comeback. They've done that down the stretch at 82 percent. Here is Shea, and he was stripped. English comes up with the basketball. It's not over yet, says Bob Schlosser and his team. No, that if you're Otterbein, you just wanted to thin and not foul. Reese misses the runner, and Gibbs comes away with the basketball again. Shea gets it back to him, and Gibbs finishes. I think that play right there is symbolic of the entire game. Two seniors just finishing it off, putting the signature on their portrait of a national championship. And now the reach in foul. I think you're exactly right. If you're a fan of this Otterbein college team, you'll know that the two guys you're going to miss are clearly Shea and Jeff Gibbs and... They went down the floor and finished. That was the 2002 preseason All-American team. We saw Jason Wortel of Carthage, a fine player that certainly has done well in his career, and of course, Gibbs. We might mention that Carthage had a big win over Rochester in the uh, consolation game today. Uh, because Carthage, a very fine team, and congratulations to Rochester, all four teams that are here, and actually all 48 teams that participated in the NCAA tournament. There are many, many, many great Division III teams that could be here that aren't because of just one game, but now these guys will be congratulated, the ones that are here. They've earned it. I mean, they haven't even hit the rim on the free throws. They switched every one of them. 
It's the fourth time we've had a team score 100 points in a Division III championship game going back to the 70s. Under a minute to play now. A 17-point Otterbein lead, and young Tony Borghese will go back to the free-throw line, and at least uh, for one Saturday this March, the basketball fans in the greater Columbus, Ohio area who are, uh, without question, Ohio State Buckeye fans will tip their hats to another champion from Central Ohio, the young men from Otterbein College. Well, Ohio State, of course, still active in the NCAA. I do, I do not know the results of today's game, but these guys are... That's the first free throw they've missed in quite a while. I understand the Buckeyes went down today, so... Okay, so now they will become the true champions of the town. And for Dick Reynolds, his first national championship, I think this is his third try here. Three times Three charm. times is a charm, and I mean, he's real low-key, and he'll be laid back. But I tell you, I promise you, in his heart, he's just overwhelmed. There's so much work that goes into this type of performance, and, and these kids, and, and it's just a real tribute. And I can't express to you the pain and the hurt that the losing team has because they have put equal effort into this and have just done remarkable. Had a season of all seasons but just came up just a little bit short. Kyle Walton, the sophomore, finishes 102-83. And with 10 seconds to play, one more rebound for Gibbs, and he will dribble out the clock. But first, Otterbein's going to call a timeout. Coach wants to get some other kids in the game, it looks like. Well, this is just the opportunity to let some young players at least experience, touch the floor in the national championship game, a memory of a lifetime. Because as good as these programs are and as many times as they've been here to win it, you got to have a lot of things go your way. Gibbs, 25 points, 25 rebounds officially now. They have added one more rebound officially. And the final countdown is on. And the Otterbein College Cardinals are the NCAA National Champions. A 102-83 victory over Elizabethtown, led by the great Jeff Gibbs. And for Dick Reynolds, he brings a national champion to his alma mater in his 30th year as the head coach at Otterbein. What a performance by Jeff Gibbs in his final college game, leading Otterbein to the win. Well, I've got to give credit to both of the seniors. Uh, Shea as well, uh, uh, Kevin, just a tremendous game. Uh, Jeff Gibbs, enough has been said. I thought the little freshman was fantastic down the stretch, handling the ball, making the free throws. And to Coach Dick Reynolds, his staff, our heartfelt congratulations. And I know there'll be a lot of celebrating going on in Westerville, Ohio. Our final score is Otterbein, 102, Elizabethtown, 83. And now for Butch SDs, I'm Bill Robb saying good night from Salem, Virginia. The Cardinals of Otterbein are the new Division III NCAA champions. Thanks for joining us, and good night from Salem.